Hey everybody guys, uh, Brian Dollinghouse here with Brett Woodall, um, our production manager at Dollinghouse Construction. We're uh, going over a few items um, with the helical pier um, for just an everyday customer that has questions and go ahead and describe a, a helical pier the best we can for uh, you guys. So Brett's going to take the place of a customer asking a couple questions because I'm sure a lot of you have no idea what a helical pier is or the parts and components of it. And the reason why we use helicals over push piers, so it'll kind of help uh, facilitate that, uh, that bridge as well. One of my first questions, Brian, would be, what would be the benefit compared to a push pier using a helical? Yeah, and that's what a lot of people ask too, is why do you choose to use helicals in some situations and push piers in others? And the biggest factor is, is the weight of a home. The push pier utilizes the weight of a home to raise and re, you know, push against as it's doing the insulation. Whereas you can see the helical utilizes a series of blades or helices to actually penetrate and screw into the ground where it's not requiring the weight of the house to load bearing depths. So I see we have two different ones here. One's got a fairly large, what, a 12 inch blade. Mm -hmm. This one is an eight and a 10. Yep. So what, why the difference? We have one big one and we have a couple smaller ones on this. Yeah, and the blade size is dependent on your soil conditions. Really dead soils, you're not gonna be able to have uh, large blades like such as this one here you're just not gonna get the depth embedded into coffin material. You're gonna lock up in shallower depths and there's still probably pockets or cavities of uh, not as dense of material that's still gonna cause the house to settle. Whereas your smaller blades, you know, can go through that with, you know, less torque and resistance and be able to get to those, those deeper depths in those uh, little bit denser soils. Uh, the reason for two is uh, we like to use two. Um, it kind of factors into the same thing where the loads are the, the, the torque ratings. The more flights you have, the greater you're going to, or the shallower you're going to lock up into your material. The lesser and um, smaller blades, you'll lock up, or lock up at a deeper rate. We like to use two blades because if the first blade spins out in a either mushy layer or a really dense layer, you have a backup blade in a, you know, usually in a component layer that will help to pull it through. Pull it through. Okay. Uh, the single one, um, it was for, you know, different projects had different specs. This one had a, a spec with a 12 inch, a single 12 inch flight uh, for it. So basically an engineer could call out for different flights. Yeah. So what's the capacity on these compared to any other product? Uh, the capacity on both these are exactly the same. They're 72 kips. So 72,000 pounds is the ultimate capacity of these if you're going to utilize them in just like a new construction cap or something of that nature. Bracket systems, it depends on the bracket system that you use for it to, uh, to gain the capacity. Your bracket's going to be your, your uh, max that you're going to be able to get out of it. So. We use round shaft helicals for compression only. Um, the biggest reason is for eccentric loading. Round pipe absorbs and is able to handle the eccentric loading a hundred times better than square shaft, solid square bar. Uh -huh. Square bar is way better at tensioning in tie back applications, but for vertical loading and retrofitting, which we typically do, we always use the, the round shaft just because of the additional eccentric loading that's you know, required of the pier to function correctly. Do you need big machinery to install these? Uh, I mean, typically for residential with this size of pipe, you don't. We uh, utilize a portable unit with that with two guys can lift. It weighs about 150 pounds. Lift it on top of this and screw the thing and keep screwing the helicals into the ground. You can get larger diameter, diameter helicals. I've done up to eight inches, and those are huge gear motors with huge excavators to run them. So there's you got you got yeah, huge excavators and skid steers holding holding the pipe and just just a massive massive machine piece of equipment. So you don't really need a big 
like a skid steer going through the yard or, or any kind of big machinery? No, I, I mean, these can go pretty well anywhere you can walk to be able to install them. Um, there's a few limitations, but very little is going to stop you from being able to install these at most residential sites. Okay. From Brian and Brett, I hope we uh, answered all your questions today and look forward to hearing from you. Until our next video.